Hello, I am Baal Kadmon, and I would like to thank you for watching and or listening to this podcast. Today, I want to discuss two topics. You don't tend to see them together. One is on Nama, or in Hebrew, Neama, and the fallen angels. And this is due to a question I received recently about my book on Samael, in which I, I made the connection between the two. And in this podcast, I am going to get a little bit more in detail about that. And the thing is, is that in the occult, you know, people know of Nama or Neama, and people know of the fallen angels, but they don't necessarily know their connection. In fact, there is some evidence that Neama was the catalyst for that fall. Now, in the occult, Naamah, as we know her, is a great demoness, one that even rivals Lilith in many ways. Her story is complex, and the Jewish tradition that surrounds her is unclear. On one hand, she is a benevolent person in the Bible. In fact, her name means pleasant. But on the other hand, she is a demoness of hell, bent on seduction and destruction. We first see her name in Genesis chapter 4, verse 22. Tzila also had a son, Tubal-Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal-Cain's sister was Naamah. This verse mentions Naamah as the sister of Tubal-Cain, the descendant of Cain, known for his metalworking skills. The text does not provide further information about Naamah or her significance beyond this mention. However, in Jewish texts, it takes on a little bit of a different tone. In an exegetical text called Bereshit Rabbah, it states, There are some rabbis who say that Naamah was Noah's wife. And why did they call her Naamah, which means pleasant or lovely? Because her deeds were lovely and pleasant. But other sources have that Naamah was the wife of Shamdon, the mother of Ashmadai, and it is from her that the demons were born. In the Kabbalah, in Zohar Hadash Bereshit 840, it states, Rabbi Ba said, she was the mother of demons, and she gave birth to them. Indeed, the mother of Ashmadai, the king of the demons, her name was Naamah. Now, this Ashmadai is Asmadius, by the way. Now, these two verses that tie Naamah to demonic activities is just two. There, keep in mind, there are others out there that have this idea that she is a demon. Now, but for our purposes, I'm not going to focus too much on that. I'm going to focus on her relationship to Cain, because that is critical. In Jewish tradition and the Old Testament, Cain is generally viewed as a complex and tragic figure. He is known as the eldest son of Adam and Eve and is famously remembered for committing the first act of murder by killing his brother Abel out of jealousy. And we can find Cain's story in the book of Genesis. But as an aside... It was not the first murder, but that is for another time. Now, that's the accepted story of Cain, right? But it's not so clear-cut. In Jewish tradition, Cain is not, in fact, the son of Adam and Eve, but rather the demon Samael and Eve. In the exegetical text, Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, a very prominent text, has this account. Samael, riding on the serpent, came to her, Eve, and she conceived. Afterwards, Adam came to her, and she conceived Abel. Now, that is a very interesting turn of events, since there's no indication in the Bible that there were any other men besides Adam to impregnate Eve. However, still, the tradition has it that Samael was Cain's father. Now, after this idea of Cain being Samael and Eve's child, many, but not all, of Cain's descendants would be considered evil or corrupt. For example, Naamah, who was related to Cain, becomes known as a fierce demoness who is only rivaled by Lilith for her treachery. Now, that's not my words, that's the words of the rabbis. Now, keep this in mind because she will play a pivotal role in a moment. Now, let's discuss the fallen angel narrative in the Bible. Uh, don't worry, this will all make sense in a moment. Most of us know that there is an account in the Old Testament, book of Genesis, that recounts the fall of the quote-unquote sons of God. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1-4 through 4. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, 
and they took them wives whomsoever they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for that he also is flesh, therefore shall his days be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. The same were the mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. Now in these verses we find God being very upset with humanity, so much so that he repents forever creating them. And these sons of God come down and have sex with the women of the earth. If you are to believe the Bible, the earth was essentially one big red light district. It was corrupt and even the animals were not spared condemnation. Not only was sexual licentiousness rampant, there was widespread violence as well. It was, I guess, sort of like how New York City was in the 70s and 80s. Now, if we look at this, it appears that humanity as a whole are the victims here, right? It was these angels or sons of God that went lusting after the women of the land. But is that really true? What if it was the exact opposite? Maybe the angels fell because of humanity. Let's explore this idea. Now let's look at a book called The Book of Jubilees. This particular text is interesting because it tries to fill in some information that is missing from the book of Genesis, and that's why it's called the Lesser Genesis. Although Jews refer to it from time to time, it is not considered canonical. However, it is considered canonical in the Ethiopian church and amongst Ethiopian Jews. This book, like many apocryphal books, are a product of Second Temple ideology and various shifts that took place in religious ideas at that time. Here's a very interesting verse. Jubilees chapter 4, verse 15. The angels of the Lord who were called watchers descended to earth to teach mankind and to do what is just and upright upon the earth. This is starkly contrasted from the book of Genesis, in which the Watchers had malevolent intent. It was only gradually that somehow or another the Watchers became corrupt. At least, some of them did. We go on to see in Jubilees, chapter 4, verse 22, and it says, The Watchers who had sinned with the daughters of men, because these had begun to mix with earthly women, so that they became defiled. That they became defiled. In the next reference, Jubilees chapter 7, verses 20 through 25, we see this, and we'll also be seeing Noah from Noah's Ark fame. It states, and this is Noah stating, Due to fornication that the watchers had illicit intercourse apart from the mandate of their authority with women, when they married of them, whomever they chose, they committed the first acts of uncleanliness. So, what we see here is that the angels came to earth to help humanity and had good intentions, but were later corrupted by humanity and not the other way around. And now, this is where Naama or Nama comes into play. In the legends of the Jews, it states something interesting. Naama, the lovely sister of Tubal Cain, led the angels astray with her beauty and from her union with Shamdon sprang the devil Asmadius. She was as shameless as all the other descendants of Cain, and as prone to bestial indulgences. Cainite women and Cainite men alike were in the habit of walking abroad naked, and they gave themselves up to every conceivable manner of lewd practices. Of such were the women whose beauty and sensual charms tempted the angels from the path of virtue. The angels, on the other hand, no sooner had they rebelled against God and descended to earth than they lost their transcendental qualities and were invested with sublunary bodies so that a union with the daughters of men became possible. The offspring of these alliances between the angels and the Cainite women were the giants known for their strength and their sinfulness. This is a crucial passage because it clarifies that Naamah and her descendants, remember they are all fathered by Samael, were the ones who brought about the fall of the angels. They came down innocently, the angels that is, and then they were corrupted. So essentially Cain's lineage via Samael caused the fall of humanity and the angels for that matter. And I find this idea to be very interesting and compelling. 
I discuss more about this in my books, The Watchers and Their Ways and Samaela History. In both books, I pull the original and ancient sources that are not as readily available to the public. There's a lot of interesting ideas that really shed light on these biblical narratives. So anyway, that is today's podcast. But before I leave you, I just wanted to update you on what I'm working on. I am two-thirds of the way through with the Mesopotamian course. Uh, It is a beast of a project, and I was expecting to be done with this last year, but it just kept on growing. I'm almost done with a course on the Mother Mary, in which I go pretty deep into theology, Marian dogma, and several ways to get closer to her. And, well, another project is coming that is related to this podcast, but I'm going to keep that a secret for now. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Speak to you soon. So mote it be.